right guys, so let's go through one, just start to finish. All right, let's get the LSRL, let's interpret it, make sure we're all up to speed, calculator commands, how to use those templates to interpret things. All right, so here we go. How quickly can athletes return to their sport following injuries requiring surgery? We are given the following data on age in years and Y equaling days after arthroscopic sur shoulder surgery before return being able to return to their sport for 10 weightlifters. All right, so here we go. Calculate, well, here's some data. Calculate the LSRL, interpret the slope, interpret the y-intercept in context. Okay, so first of all, I see I had two numerical variables. Right? So I look at age, which they're giving me in years, and then this looks like um, return to sport time, right? And it's in days. All right, so I'm gonna say y equals days, and then I'm just gonna abbreviate it with return to sport, right? I'm not gonna, I got that it's arthroscopic, arthroscopic, excuse me, shoulder surgery. But I wanna calculate the LSRL and interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So the things that I always go about doing, I'm gonna make a graph first, I wanna make a scatter plot so I can get some, just some feels for what this these data values look like. So let's fire up our calculator, okay. You see I've got some data or some calculations still left from that um, defibrillator example. I'm going to clear that out. Um, let me clear out my lists and then while I'm thinking about it, let me clear out my old LSRL, again from the defibrillator example. So I'll clear that and then let's get going. So I'll start doing some data entry. Oops, 33. Let me just do a quick check. They both have the same number of data values. That's good. Um, so let, let's see what this, this plot looks like. Let me hit zoom nine. All right, uh, it, I can kind of see a, a linear relationship, a little bit of one, right? a little positive. So, okay, I mean, it looks, I would say that looks moderate, moderate to weak if I'm just taking a look at it because it doesn't look like a solid line. It kind of actually looks like there's a clump here and a clump here, but Overall, I want to set that LSRL that way on it. So let's let's calculate that thing. So let me go back to my home screen. All right, here we go. Stat calc eight. Nope. Let's do stat calc eight. Excuse me. Oh, and you can see I've got two commands in, on the same line. I'm just going to clear it all out. Otherwise, it would give me an error. So we'll try it third times a charm. Stat calc eight. There we go. L one, L two. And let's put this into Y1. All right, now I'll go, I'll round to two, actually I'll go three decimals again, just cause. And I wanna practice getting from my calculator screen to a midterm level answer. So I'm gonna write down the first three number or the first three lines here. And then we're gonna move this over to a midterm level answer. So we have Y equaling A plus BX where A was, was it negative 5.054? And B was 0 0.272 if I'm doing this. Okay. So if I wanna make this a midterm level answer, and I've said this a couple times, but it's always good to repeat it. Right? I don't wanna have a general A and B here. I'm gonna put in my numbers for my particular problem. So we're looking at Y equaling negative 5.054 plus 0.272 x. And be careful, make sure you still have the x on here. So sometimes when we go from our calculator answer to the midterm answer, we tend to forget the x. Just be careful with that. I also need to put a predicting hat, okay? And then I also need to put context. All right, so what was the y values um, representing? In this case, it was return to sport time. So I will say I can re predict your return to sport time, and that's in days. I can tell you how many days it's going to take after surgery before you can return to your sport if you tell me how old you are. So we had negative 5.054 plus 0.272 times age. Okay. And so there's the equation of my LSRL. That is the first um, direction given to me, and there's my first answer. All right. 
The next thing I'm asked is to interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So let's start with slope. Let me start partitioning, partitioning this off so I have some space. So we'll go with slope, which was negative five. No, it was not. It was the 0.027, or 0.272 number. So my slope was actually 0.272, excuse me. I can make that a unit ratio. I can think of that as 0.272 in ratio to one. Your y variables or y values are always on top, x values always on the bottom. So let's think about the y values, they had units of days. And the x values, they had units of years. So I'm gonna keep that in mind and I'm gonna head over to that template that was on the previous page. And let's see if we can fill this in, okay? So here we go. For every one unit increase in X, the predicted average increase or decrease in Y is blank units. So let's, let's do this. So for every one year increase in age, the predicted average, and let's see if our slope is positive or negative, our slope is positive. So the predicted average increase in return to sport time is 0.272 days. So let's go through this again, right? So for every one year increase in age, the predicted average increase in return to sport time is 0.272 days. And I'm gonna take that sentence and I'm gonna write it onto my paper. So for every one year increase, in an athlete's age, the predicted average increase in return to sport time is 0 0.272 days. Right? Or another way of saying that is the older you get, the longer it takes you to recover from surgery. Okay. All right, so on the flip of that, let's take a look at the y-intercept. Our y-intercept is here. It's 0 comma negative 5.054. Okay. Now again, the zero, if I'm thinking about the x variables, that's years. The negative 5.054 is days. And I want you to look at this zero years, right? Look at our, our, our years data, right? The youngest person, the youngest athlete I had in here, if I'm looking at it, looks like they were 26 years old, and maybe the oldest was here at 34. And you can see this is coming in at somebody who's zero, zero, zero years old. Doesn't even make sense. This is massive extrapolation. So this interpretation is probably gonna be utter nonsense, but let's have some fun with it anyways and see what we can figure out. So let me pull this template back up. Okay. So I have when X is zero units, the predicted Y value is blank units. All right, so let's try this. When age, so when the athlete's age is zero years, the predicted return to sport time is negative 5.054 days. So I'm gonna try this again, right? When your age is zero years, so when you're zero years old, you're just born, they put you into shoulder, uh, to surgery, the predicted return to sport time is negative 5.054 days. Okay, nonsense. So you're just born, they gave you shoulder surgery, you were able to return to your sport five days before you were born. Again, nonsense, but it's super fun to interpret. So let, let's write this out, okay? So here we go. When an athlete is zero years old, the predicted return to sport time is negative 5.054 days. Okay. Huge extrapolation, huge. 
because the smallest x value I had was 26, and this is coming in at x equaling 0. Huge extrapola extrapolation. Definitely model breakdown at this point. Okay. All right. I'm going to scooch this down a little bit, and I want us to compare what we found with this, this calculator, or this, excuse me, this computer output that I'm showing you here. All right. So I want you to take a look at the following summary. This is called a Minitab output. So Minitab is this um, professional stats software. We're not going to buy it because it's, it's like close to $1,000. It's super expensive. That's why we were buying StatCrunch instead. But I do want you to take a look at the Minitab output because it's super helpful. It's basically, it's a little bit, not a little bit, it's nicer than your calculator output. But I want you to see some things that are in common because we'll use these Minitab outputs as we go through later chapters. So I want you to take a look at this first column here under the coefficient column, right? So under the coefficient column, I'm hoping these first two numbers look familiar to you, right? So we have here negative 5.054. That should be familiar to you. That's your y-intercept, or at least the y-coordinate of your y-intercept. Right below that, if you look at the 0.2715, there's your slope. So when they talk about coefficients, all right, that first column, they're talking about your y-intercept and your slope. So there it is, y-intercept slope. All right, and we're gonna call this value of A, value of B, great. All right, another thing I want you to take note of is what the word that is right here. Whatever word is right here is always your x variable. So your x variable, the context of it is written there, all right? Or if we wanna say it like in the stats class, this is our independent variable. Actually, if I wanna say it like a stats class, I should call it the explanatory variable. Okay, so we got that. Some of the more um, recent mini tabs will actually write the entire LSRL for you Keeping in mind that really the more advanced ones, we need the hat on it. Um, this particular version didn't have the hat. Uh, if you were to read the rest of chapter 12, although I wouldn't recommend it just yet because we haven't done hypothesis testing, these other six numbers come into play, but we won't use those for, for a long time, if at all, just time pending in this class. So we really just need to be on the lookout for this first column, y-intercept, slope, there's your x variable, and then again, some of the more uh, current mini tabs actually write the LSRL for you. Okay. All right, so there's, there's our look at a mini tab, and what I'm gonna task you with is take a look at example 12 for a moment, all right, and see if you can figure out the answer. It's a multiple choice question. Pause the video for a moment, and then come back and see if, we, if you got it right. And we're gonna keep on moving on. So I'm gonna scooch this up so that we can all have example 12 in our view. Okay. All right, so taking a look at this one, we've got a random sample of moving times in minutes and weight, weights in pounds were recorded for 20 moving jobs requiring three man crews and the results of regression analysis are shown below. Find the equation of the LSRL. All right, so let's take a look at this. Find the equation of the LSRL. This is a mini tab output. All right, the, the, the main column I want us to look at is always this coefficient column. We will, uh, 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 ugh, I'm not using my words that well. We will eventually get to ANOVA in chapter 13, but we're not there yet. So we'll just put a pin in this. And I wanna look at the coefficient column. All right, so the first thing I notice is the 21.814, and then I want to look at the number right below that, the 0 0.036538 number. Okay. So these are the two main numbers that we want to take, take notice of. And then let's look at our multiple choice options, because we can start to rule some things out. So if we look at options C and D, they're using the wrong column. They're using this standard deviation column, we wouldn't use that till we got past hypothesis testing in chapters 9 and 10 and circled back to that concept in chapter 12. So I'm going to cross out C and D. They're using the wrong numbers. This is not what we want. Okay. Now it looks like 
A, B, and E, they're using the 21.84 and the 0.037. Now, these two are using 21.84 for the y-intercept. This one's using 21.84 for the slope. So if we look at this, 21.84, because it's in the top row, that's your y-intercept, and 0.037 is your slope. So now we can rule out E. All right, so we're getting there. And then the difference between A and B is what are we calling the independent variable versus the dependent variable? Or what is our explanatory and which one is our response? So let's look a little closer. Our explanatory variable, our x variable, is always written in that second row. So if we look, weight is the x variable, right? Which would mean time is the y variable. And again, if you're thinking about moving, right, you're, the time it takes you to move does depend on how much you have to move. Like the more stuff you have to move, the heavier the moving load, the more time it's going to take you to move. But as long as we see weight right there, we know B is our answer and A is going to get ruled out, okay? Now, before we, we call it a day on example 12, I wanna give you just um, a look at where you can go with this mini tab output in terms of these two numbers, okay? So here's S and here's something called R squared. S, when we get to it, we're not there yet, but this is our average residual length, okay? So this is our average error between what we predicted and what we observed. And we're gonna talk about that more when we get to example 13 and 14. So we'll put a pin in that for now. And R squared, I haven't actually talked about yet, but I, I wanna, I, I think you've seen this popping up on your LSRL output, right? We see the R squared popping up. So I wanna talk about it in terms of this mini tab. So let me do a little calculation here. We see R squared right now is 89.3%. And I wanna to get to R. So your mini tab, they don't actually just give you your correlation coefficient, it's hidden. And we have to be able to get to it. We have to infer what the R value is based on R squared. And similarly to variance and standard deviation, all right, if I wanna get from R squared down to R, I would need to square root. And I mentioned variance and standard deviation because that's how you get from a variance to a standard deviation, you would take the square root. Now, before we can square root, R squared, you need to convert it to a decimal. So I will say R squared is 0.893, okay? And then I wanna take the square root, but if you remember from your math days, when you square root a variable that's squared, the plus or minus shows up, okay? And you will need to decide, you'll need to commit one way or another, this is the positive square root or this is the negative square root. Now, if I crunch this number on my calculator, the square root of 0.893 looks like it's about 0.945. So I am getting down to R is either equal to the positive or negative square root of 0.893, which is the decimal 0.945. All right, now how do I pick? All right, here's how we pick. Whatever the sign of your slope, all right, what you find out, was my slope positive or negative? If your slope is positive, then take the positive square root. If your slope is negative, take the negative square root. So for this particular example, my slope was positive. So because our slope was positive, all right, then we know R is also positive. They have the same sign. If the slope's positive, R is positive. If the slope's negative, R is negative. So where are we going with all of this? I can finally conclude that R is exactly positive 0.945. So even though it's not stated explicitly here, it's implied that R is 0.945. We turn this number into a decimal, we take the square root, we decide either the positive or negative square root based on whether the slope is positive or negative, okay? You're never gonna use R squared adjusted, don't worry about that. And then we're gonna come back to the average residual length towards the end of the chapter. All right, thanks gang, bye.